Hello and welcome back to the report. I'm the Gaff Major and this is Amateur Reports. Amateur Reports is your gameplay submissions with my commentary and it's usually a good place to spotlight some good gameplays from the community that follows this channel. Now today we have a submission from Eternal Abyss and he's playing the tier 6 British Premium Battleship HMS Hood. Uh, however, she is really a battle cruiser and that should be really taken into account. Now, uh, this is a game of Domination on Trap and it is a tier 5 and 6 game, so we're already off to a good start being top tier. Also, you can look at the matchmaking and see it's very cruiser heavy. On the friendly team, there's an Akatsuki, Akatsuki, Aoba, Shores, New Orleans, Pensacola, Grouse Bay, a Total Abyss in his hood, and in New Mexico. On the enemy team, we have a Benham, a Benham, an Aoba, a Mayuku, Pensacola, Dallas, York, Colorado, and Ismail. However, those two battleships on the enemy team, the Colorado with 16 inch guns, that could very much hurt, and the Ismail being very accurate and hitting very hard. So, um, not a great uh, situation for um, Eternal Abyss and his hood, because hood does, um, she has a very thin deck armor, so she does not like plunging fire. So, and also being that she is has that thin deck armor, um, she doesn't react well to high explosive fire coming in from enemy cruisers as well. Um, that that's going off of my own personal experience. Now, down in the description will be the command build and the ship models used on the page Hood. So, opening volley on the York of armor piercing. Getting ourselves our first sister on 11,400 damage. That was only really one hit on the target, so very nasty AP damage coming out of this. Now you notice from the uh, title of the video, I called it the Galloping Girl. Uh, that's my personal little nickname for uh, HMS Hood, especially with the HMS Hood build that he has taken, uh, which is the Azure Lane Hood. The reason being is you can get the top speed right up, and you can see just there he was up to 36.8 knots before he had to start making the turn. Only getting a uh, over penetrating hit on the York there, so only taking it over for a little bit more. Ismail to his front, which is obviously a concern. Looking at the mini map, we can see that four of the enemy cruisers and the Colorado all over at the Charlie objective. Getting another volley out on the York. Tickling it a little bit more. Now the reason why I call it the Galloping Girl build is because uh, the Azure Link uh, Hood Commander, um, she comes with Royal Navy's glory which really increases the uh, top speed of this uh, ship and especially when you compare it, well, combine it with the inspirations of Gepetti and Brazer to really buff the speed up plus a, uh, a common battle booster in order to increase the speed a little bit more. Getting two penetrating hits and one overpen on the York, nearly finishing her off and getting the capture assist in a battleship. Looking at the minimap a little bit further, we can see that one of the enemy destroyers is now spotted in the Charlie objective, and it looks like Eternal Abyss's team have focused very heavily on this Alpha objective alongside him, um, finishing off the Orc very nicely with a final penetrating hit. Now, he has taken Master Mechanic, uh, however, he's also taken far sighted, so he's only gained one additional repair party over what you would have base wise. Using the island in order to isolate himself from the Ismail very nicely, and also the Ismail's focusing on the uh, rest of the enemies. Ismail's now nicely broadside on. Let's see what kind of reward we can get with our hood build. Nice, getting ourselves about 8,600 damage. Switching our turrets out to our starboard side. And as you can see, uh, and here, he is, uh, she got the Azure uh, Lane stuff enabled, so uh, it's actually quite a nice camouflage on the hood. I do like the Royal Blue, actually, I have to confess. Getting another 6,000 out of the Ismail, but not quite able to find a Citadel. For modifications, he's taken Aiming Systems Module 1, Propulsion Module 2, and Target Acquisition Systems Module 1. And there's a very good uh, showcase of why he's taken the Propulsion Mods um, a bit later on. I'll point that out. Personally, I go for Steering Gears. The reason being is I find that the, the hood can be a little sluggish when uh, kiting sometimes. Uh, and having the um, 
I usually go running with scissors and steering gears. The reason being is the combination of those two gives you just enough rudder kick to almost flick out your turrets and tuck back in nice and quickly. However, I can see the uh, I I can accept the options or the alternative choice of going far sighted than propulsion mods. Fingers crossed, we should be able to punish this more now. Very nice, getting ourselves a citadel and getting ourselves about. 27,000 damage, however, someone uh, secures the kill uh, with a fire, so unfortunately, um, although we're up to 79,000 damage, we've only got the one kill so far. Only two citadels as well, which is quite amusing. So, let's see how the situation is. Eternal Abyss's team has lost two friendly cruisers, both of which were at the Charlie objective, and the enemy team have lost one of their battleships and one of their cruisers, both of which were to the east side of the Alpha objective. Spotted. Now, that's the one of the problems with Hood. She does have an absolutely monstrous uh, detectability, even with a camouflage equipped. I think it's about 14 kilometers. Because uh, one thing to note is he has taken Brawler, which does actually reduce the uh, gun range of the Hood. However, I do find that Hood really benefits from being a bit closer in. She's not really a long range sniper. That's just simply due to a combination of her accuracy and her armor. Colorado is giving us broadside, so uh, aiming slightly higher up, going for the upper bout because we know the Colorado has got an absolutely tanky amount of armor. However, once you get through the thinner upper bout, you're getting himself uh, 15,000 damage from five penetrating hits. Noting there's uh, two destroyers off to his port side, both of which we know will be Benham's. Friendly Akatsuki is laying a smoke screen to his front, or however, that's not going to be a massive use uh, considering that there's aircraft in the air and the gigantic detectability of the hood. So the enemy's gone and secured the center caps, and now the enemy's actually getting the cap advantage. However, uh, Eternal Business Team still has quite a healthy amount of a point lead uh, simply due to uh, having captured B for longer and considering that the Bravo objective is being contested. Only one repairing party left though, um, so probably going to be looking at using that soon. Now here's a nice little bit where using the propulsion mods he's been able to really back it up nice and quickly. Tidying off the Colorado, getting himself his second kill with 111,000 damage done. However, friendly Pensacola that was contesting the Bravo objective is now gone. So it's switching it back forwards. And this is a very nice one. HMS Hood comes with sonar, so it actually means that she has some form of defense against torpedoes when you consider that she does have a gigantic turning circle of 910 meters, and that's simply due to her very long length. Although amusingly, the recent tier 7 premium cruiser, that is the end reward of the Yasin Butai campaign, uh, the Yazuma is actually the same length as the Hood almost. Closing in on the Benham, high explosives loaded, should be able to finish her off in one hit using our sonar to pick her up. There she goes, polishing off very nicely, and earning ourselves a high count of at the same time as securing our third kill. Mayuku to our front, possibly going to be giving us some trouble. Always got to bear in mind that Mayuku does have two torpedo launchers per side, and she's probably chucked those torpedoes out now. So, hoping that she hasn't predicted the sharp turn into the island. Armour piercing now loaded into the barrels. So the idea behind a battle cruiser is very much she may come with big guns in order to kill a cruiser. Um, now the armour wise uh, varies depending on the design but it's more down to the compartmentalization. A battleship will have a lot more compartmentalization inside in order to reduce the spreading of jack damage. Whereas a battle cruiser will sacrifice this in order to um, basically lighten the weight. It's one of the reasons why Hood went down so quickly was when the magazine exploded due to the limited compartmentalization, uh, the uh, flash fire that went through the ship um, went through large parts of it very quickly and probably set off other magazines within. So Benham now closing in, high explosives loaded, the Mayuku torpedoes passing on his starboard side as the Benham torpedoes pass on his port side. 
no more repair parties and the sonar is down for cool down at the moment so uh now this is going to be quite a big big moment this is where you, watch how quickly you change the acceleration so he's minus 20 knots and very quickly he's up to minus 15 minus 10 just gone minus five and away we go and we should be clearing those benham torpedoes very nicely so loading up AP again because the only things that are left on the enemy team are the three enemy cruisers, one of which we know is the Mayuku. However, he's now secured himself four kills with 122,000 damage completed. And there's the Mayuku broadside on, very nice. Let's see if we can punish him. Not quite, she managed to. Uh get moving uh, so uh, mostly over pens uh, through the rear deck now again we know the Mayuku's fired her torpedoes recently from her uh, starboard side because they passed us recently so um, expect her to be chucking up torpedoes on her port side getting himself a confederate medal there's the torpedoes or at least that's one batch of torpedoes Double fire, knocking it off, fair enough, but a little bit risky potentially. Swing the guns round to the starboard side as we close in round the other side of the island. Now, Hedgehog's Hood will possibly be quite an interesting one when it comes to um, the introduction of aircraft carriers. Uh, the reason being is that she does have um, close in rocket anti aircraft. Um, projectors, I guess you could say. These are very, these were a crazy idea by the British, in which you would fire a rocket up, um, which would then be suspended by a parachute, and therefore, when the enemy aircraft flew for them, uh, there would be a cable suspended from the bottom of the rocket or air mine now, and uh, if it hit the wing, it would drag the bomb down over the aircraft wing and hit it. So, getting a city on the Mayuko, but. This is where even Eternal Bliss admits that he's done a problem and well, made a mistake and I, I can see it now, can you see it? Well we know the Mayuku fired off her port torpedoes and she switched over to starboard. There we go. Unfortunately with being broadside on like this there's not much chance he's got of being able to dodge these torpedoes and unfortunately there we go. But he does seal the deal on the Mayuku earning himself a crap of a niche so uh, or nor managed to get himself five kills, 145,000 damage. Now, um, this game does have two minutes and 15 seconds left, and so what I'll do is I'll leave you a bit of Colonel Bogey's March and I'll catch you at the end screen. So here we are at the end screen, and General Biss managed to get himself 145,000 damage with 62 hits on target, and 3 citadels and 2 fires, securing himself 5 kills, 1 capture assist, 5 secondary hits, and 9 incapacitations, plus shooting down aircraft. Getting himself Kraken Unleashed, Confederate, and High Calibre. And the reason why he sent this in is because this was his 100th Kraken. So, uh, congratulations to Eternal Bliss for reaching that milestone. I'm still a little distance off it myself, but well, I get there when I get there. Um, now, it was quite enjoyable, and he knows exactly what the mistake he made. To, to not really too much to mention it, but just one thing to always, always remember, guys. Uh, cruise, cruisers have the torpedoes on both sides, uh, so... Um, if they uh, if they fired some from one way and they flip, they're gonna fire some from the other way. Um, like he said, he he just forgot about it himself, and you can see why sometimes the heat of the moment can get to. Going on to the team scores and internal is obviously the runaway winner getting with the five kills. Uh, pretty much the only other person on her team to actually get any kills was the was the Shores. And uh, Tenebris uh, coming in about one thousand ship XP more than the next best player on his team.
uh, going on to the economy and obviously as it's a tier 6 premium ship she does make a nice amount of profit here he's getting himself 785,000 credits with premium and a epic credit booster um, plus it's his first win in the ship as well um, obviously the ship service cost is discounted down to only 84,000 credits as well so very nice very nice all in all that was a really great submission in the galloping girl as I call it or uh, HMS hood and um, using the same well very similar HMS hood build as well so uh, galloping along at 36.8 knots uh, during this clip uh, not quite as speedy as my 37.7 knots but uh, I think eternal this is a uh, Closing in if he keeps uh, ranking up a uh, Gepetti, Hood, and um, Razor. Well, if you have any of your own game captures that you'd like to submit for Andrew Ports, then our email address is down in the description along with the command build and the ship modules used by Turner Vista in this capture. Also, there is a link to Patreon if you wish to support the channel on Patreon. Feel free to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you are already a subscriber. Then, thank you very much, guys. Until next time, I'm the Gab Major, and back to the board.